Lies of P arrives on Game Pass this August and has a free demo right now. But if you want to survive in this steampunk Souls-like, you'll want to follow these tips and tricks. And that's the truth. One thing which sets Lies of P apart from other Souls-like games is its unique weapon system. You'll find plenty of different weapons lying around the game's world, from lightweight sabers to heavy hitting hammers, allowing you to continually switch things up until you find the one that fits your playstyle or feels the most effective for your current enemies. So far, so soulsy. But the difference here is that each weapon can be broken down into two separate parts, a handle and a blade. From there, you're free to mix and match these pieces to form whole new weapons, opening up a whole new world of possibilities. They each have different stats too, like how much they're able to charge your health and damage reduction rate when guarding. Lies of P features 30 different basic weapon types and over 100 possible combinations. So get creative. Don't just play with the weapons as you find them. Break them up and see what you can make either from stargazers, which act like bonfires, or at the Hotel Krat hub world. Aside from all those wonderful weapons, Pinocchio is armed with a couple of very tasty abilities called Legion Arms and Fable Arts. The Legion Arms are exceptionally handy bits of gear that our hero can add to his arm, allowing it to fire things like grappling wires, flames, and electric charges. Use the grapple string arm, for instance, to disrupt attacks or wrangle faraway enemies right to you. Or use the left arm of steel to pack an almighty wallop and bring enemy attacks to a halt. The fable arts are skills that are actually bound to the handle or the blade of your weapon and can provide a range of different offensive and defensive abilities. They're pretty similar to the Ashes of War found in Elden Ring, but combined with Lies of P's highly customizable weapon system, they open up even more options for how you want to tailor your character build. In the heat of battle, it can be easy to forget about both these options, but they're only ever an LT or Y button press away. And they can add so much depth and complexity to your fighting style, so try to keep them in mind. As well as the ingenious weapon system, Souls-like veterans are going to find plenty of new mechanics to master in Lies of P. It's also worth noting that if you get hit while blocking, you'll actually still lose a little bit of health. However, there is a brief window in which you can earn it back by successfully landing an attack. So the key to staying healthy is being as retributive as possible. Don't despair though, because dodging is still a very viable option, especially since you actually get a few invincibility frames each time you use the B button to duck away from an enemy attack. So generally, try not to let people hit you with stuff remains a really solid bit of advice in Lies of P. And if you're determined to soak up some punishment, then the perfect guard is a very neat trick. Perfect guard allows you to destroy enemy weapons by pulling off an expertly timed block. They won't be left totally empty handed, but their busted gear will make their attacks shorter and less damaging, which can give you a real upper hand. This is definitely a technique you'll want to get down as quickly as possible. But just remember that while pulling off a perfect guard will allow you to avoid taking any damage, it will also consume some stamina. And speaking of health, as a puppet mechanoid, Pinocchio's health system also works a little differently than your average Souls-like character. His health can be refilled by pulse cells, your Estes flask in this world. But once you've run out, it's not the end. Once depleted, one can be restored by successfully landing attacks on your enemies. It's a clever risk reward mechanic which can encourage you to become even more aggressive as your health wanes. Ergo is a resource which pretty much functions as the souls of this particular souls-like, in that you'll be using it to level up and you'll drop a whole bunch of it when you die. However, the ergo counter in the top right corner of the screen can actually give you a lot more information than just the size of your current hoard. For example, if you notice that it's turned from white to blue, that means you now have enough ergo to level up. And since there are a lot of very murderous, mechanized things all over the place, you should probably do that. On top of that, anytime you die, the counter will add another box which shows you exactly how much ergo you dropped. This way, you can make an informed decision about whether it's worth the risk to try and recover it, or if you're better off just writing it off. The world of Lies of P is a dark and dangerous place, so staying sharp is absolutely vital to staying alive. If you can sneak up on an enemy undetected and hit them from behind, you'll deal massive damage, 
so it really pays to keep your eye out for these opportunities. Similarly, if an enemy's health bar glows white, it means they're about to go groggy, which provides you with an invaluable chance to lay into them with heavy attacks, so it's super important to watch for this as well, with general minions and bosses. Finally, it's not just your mind you need to keep sharp. Pressing down on the D-pad and then holding X will sharpen your blade too. You'll want to keep that bar full whenever possible because if it gets low, you won't be able to string together attacks. Forget to do so before a fight and your enemies will pretty quickly realize that your weapon isn't the sharpest tool in the box. And neither are you. Exploring Liza P's beautiful Bellapoc world truly is its own reward. But there are also a bunch of other more tangible rewards for doing so. Most importantly, you'll find that there are a variety of side quests to be tracked down that aren't marked on your map. For example, at one point you'll hear a woman talking. Follow the voice and you'll see her silhouette in a nearby window. Go talk to her and you'll be able to undertake a side quest involving a puppet baby with a handsome pile of ergo on offer for completing it. So don't just bask in how pretty the game's world is, immerse yourself in the sights and sounds of the place and investigate anything that looks like it might have a story behind it. Like any good souls like, Lies of P is stacked with incredible boss fights against devastatingly powerful enemies. And while each of them will require their own distinct strategy, there are a few general tips that can help you out. And in case this is your very first Souls-ish experience, I'll start with the basics. Firstly, you want to take your time with each boss. Familiarize yourself with their attack patterns so you can find the best moment to attack. You'll also want to look for their tells that indicate they're about to unleash their deadliest moves so that you can get yourself far, far away. Ideally, you'll want to find lulls that are large enough for you to hit them with a heavy attack to really chip away at their health bar. But don't get greedy though. Hanging about trying to deal more damage than there's really time for is a sure way to get yourself consigned to the dead puppet pile. When you've got them groggy, it's time to move in for the kill. So look for their critical strike point and then batter it with heavy attacks. For example, the best way to defeat the scrapped watchman is to quite literally beat his ass. Finally, don't be afraid to ask for help. We know you're a proud little automated man, but if you get the opportunity to call in an NPC summon, take it. Cracks cooling stations are available to use items called star fragments to summon an NPC spectre, which are incredibly helpful, even if they just provide a nice distraction. Follow these tips and none of Lies of P's enemies will be able to hold you down. And for more expert advice and random Xbox musings, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell before you go.